In this video, we're going to learn about prequel with just a little bit of help from DuckDB. Welcome to Learn Data with Mark. Prequel stands for Pipelined Relational Query Language, and it sort of frames itself as a modern language for transforming data, uh, potentially as a SQL replacement. And if we sort of scroll down their homepage, it's sort of got like a little bit of a sense of humor as well. So they've got like a section saying, hey, this is for Hacker News enthusiasts. The compiler is written in Rust. So, I mean, I guess that's appealing to a bunch of people. But more interesting to me is if we go down even further, they point out that it's actually more for analytical querying. And so I was like, oh, that's cool. Maybe this is going to be a fun thing to use with DuckDB. And lucky for me, Yannick Welsh actually just last week published an, a DuckDB extension for prequel. So we can now run prequel from inside DuckDB. So let's have a look at how we could do that. And the first thing is that when we start DuckDB, we need to indicate that it's going to accept unsigned extensions because Yannick's extension is not yet a, a signed one. Once we've done that, we can set, tell it where the custom extension repository is. Then we'll install prequel and finally load it. Now, to explore with Prequel, we're going to use the Google Trends dataset. So they've got a bunch of datasets for BigQuery. And one that in particular looks kind of interesting is it has the international rising terms that people are using to search kind of each week. And so I exported that uh, in BigQuery to a bunch of Parquet files. So let's have a look at what we've got. So we're going to create a table called rising that basically is a concatenation of all of the data inside those Parquet files. And then once we've created the table, let's just rename one of the columns. So there's a column called rank, uh, which is the keyword in prequel. So we're going to rename that to search underscore rank. Once we've done that, so we're still in SQL land at the moment. So we're going to just describe it so we can see what we've got. So we can see we've got a country code, we've got a region name, we've got a score, we've got some dates. Now let's start writing some prequel. So first query, we're going to just do something simple. So we're going to say from rising, so from that table, take one record. So you see, there we go. We've got a record from Brussels. The search term is 1985, and you can see it's from the 4th of March, 2018. We can also do aggregates. So again, we can say from rising, and then we can call this aggregate function. We can pass in all sorts of aggregates. We can do count, we can do max, and then name of a field. We can do min, we can do a standard deviation. And you can see we get back a result, like with all the, all those different values. We can also round them. So we can pipe the, the, the result into another function. So in this case, we can, we're going to round the average and the standard deviation to three decimal places to kind of take up a little bit less space. And so you can see, there we go, the result, it's, it's kind of worked quite nicely. We can also group by fields. We can kind of do those aggregations, but with a group around it. So this time we're grouping by country code and then we'll do the aggregates inside there. And so this time it's going to group by country code rather than grouping effectively by the whole, the whole thing. We can also group multiple fields. If we're grouping multiple fields, we need to put them in square brackets. Uh, and you can see this time each country is kind of broken down. So we can see like we kind of go from the country code into a region. And, and so it's actually kind of quite fine grained where it tells you the searches have been done. We can also do filtering. So if we get rid of those aggregates and we just go from the rising table, let's find what's happening in Great Britain. And one thing you might notice here is the score is actually null. So that's no good. So we can actually also remove nulls. We can say score does not equal null. And then we get back a different record. Alternatively, we can choose to pass through a default value. Now, what this has done, you notice, is that we've now got an extra column. So we've got clean score to zero, and we've, got, and we've also got score, which is empty. And so that's another cool thing, is you can actually remove fields. So by putting the exclamation mark in front, you can choose to either remove one field or remove a bunch of them. So I'm just going to get rid of that original score field. And then we'll carry on just with clean score. We can also use something called an F string. So this is effectively for concatenating a bunch of fields together. So in this case, we're putting region code, region name, and country code all together in one field. And then we'll remove the individual, uh, individual ones afterwards. And you can see then at the bottom, we get a place which has them all concatenated together. It also has this kind of neat thing called an S string. And so this is when you want to do some custom SQL. So you want to fit some custom SQL into your uh, prequel. And so this works really well for doing uh, subqueries because basically prequel, the idea is that you sort of start from the top and it basically assumes you're always going down. Whereas subquery is sort of like, I'm going down and, oh, actually I need to go out a bit there. And so here we're, we're saying, I want to find what's happening in Great Britain in the last week, the latest week that you have. But I'm, uh, and so that's what the select max week subquery is doing. And so if you run that, you can see, hey, everybody in the UK is talking about Gary Lineker, which is perhaps not that surprising uh, if you've been following the news at all in the last couple of weeks. We could also choose to filter by dates. So we could have a look at that Gary Lineker Twitter term and see like what's been happening. Like has it, how's, it, how's it been trending like since say the beginning of February. Uh, and if we run that query, we can see that it wasn't really 
much interest at all. Like even the week before, it was barely any interest. Um, so the score is like indicating like how, how, how many searches are there in the country. And then the search rank is if you applied it across other regions as well. So you can see like in terms of overall traffic, it's never that big. But in terms of like England specific traffic, it's really massive uh, on that week of the 5th of March. So effectively what's happening for each of those prequel queries, they're all being compiled into SQL and then run against DuckDB. So let's have a quick look at what that compilation process looks like. So we're going to use uh, just a Python wrapper around the Rust compiler. So it's called prequel Python. Um, you can see what we're going to do is we're going to compile everything from standard in and then we're going to print it out. Uh, and then we've got, we've got here, you can see we've got one of those queries that we just looked at. So we've put that in a file and we've just concatted it out uh, to the terminal. And now what we'll do is we're going to uh, pipe that into the that, that that Python script and have a look at what the results look like. And so you can see there, it's, I mean, it's kind of more or less what you would expect, right? It's just mapped the prequel functions to SQL equivalents. We can do the same for our second query. So here's the second one. So this is the one with the, the subquery. And if we run that one up through the through the through the script, you can see again we've got this time it's got that it's got that subquery in the middle in the where clause. Uh, and then finally let's have a look at one more. So this is uh, the, 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 the final query that we ended up with, like looking at how Gary Lineker's <laughs> trending status has been over time. And again, if we run that one through, we can see we get, it's quite a reasonably simple query, I guess, right? I guess you can see the coalesce at the top, and then we've got a bunch of uh, clauses under the where. And so we've kind of only really touched the surface of what you can do with prequel. This is about a day's worth of playing around with it, but it looks like a really interesting piece of tech to me. I'm definitely going to be playing with it a bit more, and I think you should too.